20, 25, 30 years. You know what I mean? What, 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 you know, what, what is this going to California to get somebody? Okay. Well, thank you, Aaron. All right, let's wrap it up here. This show is also brought to you by Neemars, Growing Hands in the Jar. If your head not growing, if it's balling like mine's Jimmy's and... <laughs> he pointed at me, bro. He said he pointed at me, and then he said like mine. <laughs> Call this number. That's a Yancey. Get some Neemars Growing Hands in the Jar. That's number 410-652-8698. 410 Jimmy, where can they find you at on social media so people can look at some of the stuff? Yeah, I want to see them change. Uh, yeah, real simple. Of course, on, on Facebook, you just search for Baltimore Spectator. That would be me. And on Twitter, since there's only 16 characters allowed in the title name, uh, it's Balto Spectator, B-A-L-T-O, BaltimoreSpectator.com. Just, where can they find your media? Um, just check me out. Uh, either Talk About It Radio or Christopher Irvin, last name E R V I N, right under there. And it, and what's really happening with Dom and Ma? And what about if they want to read about your book, Dr. Andre Humphrey? Uh, they, they can reach me at 443 418 8898. And your book about what? Black Youth in the Juvenile Justice System. Tell Talks me. about the corruption in the system and the injustice and, and the, the, wow. you know, everything. We just very informal. And if you'd like to sponsor a taxi talk or get. To come on the show next week, right. every Friday, 3 o'clock, call me, my number, 443-839-8412. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. So, Larry. Bless you. All right. Yeah. Well, folks, I'm Larry, the celebrity care driver. I'm your host on Taxi Talk, and in the studio is Dr. Andre Humphrey. Bless How you doing, Dr. Andre Humphrey? I'm doing fine, Brother Wallace. Bless you. How you doing? All right. And also, we have a special guest. They call him Boom Boom, right? Boom Boom. 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 I just refuse to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's all Chris right. Herb. Chris, oh, brother. Bro. Christopher Irvin. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And guess what? You know, the originator who helped me start the show seven years ago is my bodyguard, Jimmy the Bodyguard. Jimmy. Remember him? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. The Baltimore Spectator. You bring knuckles in the room. Yeah. Baltimore <laughs> Jimmy, what's going on out there? What's up, brother Jimmy? Good. I, um, you know, I, I just got online, and I, I think I heard of uh, Christopher Irvin. Yeah. Name? Yes, sir. How well, are you, Jay? This is excellent. I didn't, I didn't know that uh, he would be on the, the program, but, you know, Larry, I don't know if you realize that day at Mondam, and he eventually uh, was on the ground there with us as well. You know Freddy what, Gray. I didn't know that. <laughs> and the time was for the day is what, what really happened at Battle Mondam and Mall. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, and I would talk to Chris. We, we, we were walking together there. for a while. Yeah, oh, wow. on the front line. Mm -hmm. On the front line. A, a, a lot of things that, um, you know, believe it or not, you would have thought by now the mainstream media would have uh, picked up and, and did, a, did a better job of, 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 of exposing, but, but really didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you know, and we also, a little later on, we're going to be talking about the 16-year-old uh, got strangled to death as she, she was um, uh, sexually assaulted and the house was burned down, tragedy happened. So, my uh, condolences goes out to the fam. Wow. Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Jimmy, you know, do you, do you have any uh, uh, video footage of stuff that happened? Before? You know, what made the uh, the kids throw out? Yeah. Well, you know, that, you know that, that, that question, there's no necessarily straightforward answer to that. But I, I want to get into a, a few things that led up to that. And okay. incidentally, speaking of the rocks, I, I got to let me just get this out the way at the top. I have lived in the city a long time, uh, family near that area, go to that area a lot. Before and since, there is no trace of any rocks of that size available in the hundreds to be thrown. Mm -hmm. I have to make this clear. We have surveyed the area in detail. I have photographers with me. We walked up and down. All we saw were tiny pebbles. 
uh, that day, mysteriously, there were lots of large throwable rocks and bricks and other objects all exactly where the police pushed the students to. And, and they were very deliberate in the area they were pushing them to. This is, uh, we have footage of this. It wasn't random. There and was they were pushing them across the street in the alley part. It, it, they were pushing them across the street, across Town Road, and miraculously, magically, an area that this isn't the country, this is the city. Suddenly, there were all these large throwable rocks in that area, Larry. So <laughs> you ask what made the kids throw rocks? Well, what made the rocks suddenly appear? Right. Mm, okay. And what about how come the kids wasn't let on the subway station go home? Why didn't they stop mm -hmm. the, the, the transit? Because it was uh, orchestrated. It was orchestrated, yes. Was well, well, some hungry? people saw uh, a few thousand overnight from the, the raw footage I released. And yeah, those, I have to preface, those are just little snippets. We, as we, as cop rabbit material, and I put them all out there for people to steal and not give credit and all that. You have to wait till the project is finished. But we put enough there just to showcase what you saw and what you saw with me, Larry, because you were there the whole yeah. time. We got there first before everyone else. Is a whole bunch of students masked up walking, trying to get to the transit station, and their their paths were blocked he was by black cops. Some people say, "Oh, the gear me. wasn't put on until after me. the rock throwing." Not true. You saw it with your own eyes. It was up. Before the rock, and going, furthermore, you had the SWAT teams and others showing up SWAT with team. automatic weapons pointed outwards, oh, at yeah. a high ready position inside the station. So, what student is going to walk up to the transit station when armed men are there, or get to a bus or the subway, which the gates were pulled and everything was locked? Gates this was whole closed. thing was carefully orchestrated, and, and, and you know what? We we have the proof. We're going to show it. A lot of people could have already put the pieces together and can see that for themselves. There's still those in denial, and the fact of the matter is, I'm now learning. A lot of the police officers, they didn't even realize the, the role they played in in this orchestration. Because guess what? When you're a pawn on a chessboard, somebody Orchestrate. else is making the moves. You're just put where you're placed. Well, folks, well, Jimmy, let me just interject and say this to you. How could someone stop the public transportation that day and, and let them out of school early and they had no way of getting home? They notify their parents, and when you get a, a group of young people of that magnitude, if they don't have something constructive to do, they're going to find something destructive to do. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, that's just organically, right? We, this mm -hmm. is, we're talking about teenagers who are naturally rebellious. Mm -hmm. Even the good kids, you put them in the right atmosphere and the right environment. But when you apply pressure, Absolutely. now you're, you're, you're being, you're, your normal routine is being disrupted. You walk every day across the mall, go to the train, say, now you're being told for no good reason, nope, you ain't coming here today. Huh? What? Why? You, you, so now you that's, that's the part that is insightful. You are inciting something. You're instigating something when you take teenagers and disrupt their normal wow. routine without any good reason. Wow. And, for, and furthermore, let's be clear about this. We're still trying to get confirmation. But if there was all this information, credible intelligence received that the students were going to do this, that, and the other, why wasn't there communication between the police department and the schools? Why, mm. weren't, why weren't they prepared? Wow. You're right. Why You're absolutely right. Schools uh, why wasn't the dismissal done in an orderly fashion and maybe have the students escorted to the station to get them out of the area as opposed to corralling them off and blocking the station? If you think something's going to happen, do you want a larger crowd that's harder to control or do you want to expedite the crowd being able to uh, make uh, you know egress from the area? Well, brother, brother Jimmy, let's think about Chris, this because I, I'm asking the same questions uh -oh. you asked. Remember um, the night of the baseball game, prior baseball to everything game. really getting kicked up, once the thing started at Pickles Pub and it started getting heated, Pickles yeah. Pub. What <laughs> they didn't let the people out of the stadium. They had them shelter in place for that. their safety, right? It had gotten cold and it was raining, but they had people stay in the stadium. So now move forward. At the funeral, they released this information that they had. They had information about El gangs funeral. at Freddie Gray's funeral. Uh -huh. The police the tweeted funeral. out that they had information that gangs were going to unite. To, to, to take police. That sounds like a threat. And all over the country, they're, peak, they're picking people up for threats on social media. Uh, right. And yet they haven't gone after anybody, uh -oh. um, you know, tra trace down the Is origin of this tweet. I tell you what, tune back in next Friday on Taxi Talk. That's right, folks. www.wolbbaltimore.com if y'all are here. Long distance, 1877. 704 1010. Or well, if you're local, tune to turn on to 1010 a.m. That's right, 3 p.m. Friday. Don't forget.
All right. Got a co-host coming in, too. Mm. Until next time, folks. If you'd like to sponsor Taxi Talk, call me. My number is 443-839-8412. That's 443-839-8412. Instead of a 30-minute show, trying to move up to one hour. You know, check me out. Have a blessed day, folks. Don't forget, give me a call. All right? Sessions like you talk radio